Let me just start out reading Hebrews chapter, chapter 10. Look at your verse 24 and 25. It says, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. And it does that in the manner of saying that that's a, <clears throat> an actual day that that is a particular day, and we know that that's the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, the day that he's talking about, is that period of time that is from the moment of the rapture to the end of the millennial reign of Christ and the resurrection of the dead. So that's one of the things that he's talking about, and he's saying when you see that beginning to approach, that, you know, you shouldn't do what most people do when... Uh, when disaster is approaching, when things are approaching that seem scary and they, they retreat, he says, the more you see that coming, the more you should get together and be together. Um, and that's, you know, because we're supposed to be around each other so that we can stir or provoke. The idea is, is that that interaction, that direct interaction, you know, and, and some people say, well, I can stir up all kinds of trouble on Facebook, but that's different. This is talking about this exhortation that's happening is something that's done verbally in between each other um, while you're present. And the whole idea, as you say, the assembling of ourselves together. Um, the assembly or, or the gathering together, the assembly of the church in the Greek is ekklesia. And that means the, you know, the called out ones, the ones that are called out from the public to come together for a particular purpose. And Jesus says that purpose is to come together in his name. Uh, he talks about it in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, uh, where he says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Uh, and some people say, you know, well, you know, where two or three are gathered, uh, you know, as long as it's less than 10, but I don't know. The more we're doing this, the less I find that funny, you know? <clears throat> Though it seems humorous, the, the idea that Christ gives here, and granted, this is in regards to um, rebuking somebody or doing something like that. But the fact is, is that he says these are people that are coming together specifically in his name. You know, they're, they're, they're not going, you know, fishing. They're not going boating. They're not going and saying, you know, hey, that's where I find God the most. And it's like, that's because you've made up your own way of doing things. Jesus says you come together, you're separating yourself from the world and coming together in his name. Uh, the, and the Bible calls that an assembly or sometimes the church even is what we call it today. Culturally, that's kind of how we define it and what we do. Um, in Acts chapter 1 verse 14 uh, the church gathered together continually in supplication and prayer. Uh, it even says that because they saw the resurrected Christ, Mary and all of Jesus' brothers and sisters, they were all coming into the church to join them in prayer. Even though it was dangerous, even though there was a chance that they could die. The church, the gathering, the assembly of the church is vital. And right now... The church has kind of been, you know, and when I say church, I mean it from the cultural stances we observe it, of going to church, of being, you know, going to an assembly or being part of a body. I know of a pastor, and I don't necessarily agree with this pastor's stance and the fact that he's having, <laughs> he's bussing people in and they're doing church as normal. Um, but I understand his view, and his view, uh, one of the things that he says is that, um, if, if this were so deadly, uh, it, why wouldn't they shut the doors of everything? You know, why are they letting thousands of people a day into Walmart, H-E-B, Kroger, um, you know, whatever, you know, your, your grocery store of choice is? Why are they filling those up every day with all kinds of people and nobody's in protective gear, nobody's doing anything? Now, granted, H-E-B is doing some pretty good things, but... That's not the point. The point is, is that the church to the Christian is vital. It's vital. Our assembling together of ourselves, as we just read just from a few passages, it's something that the, the early church was willing to die for, uh, was willing to give up their lives for. 
you know, just to Paul risked life and limb, um, went through all kinds of stuff just to start churches, to share the gospel and to get churches started um, in, all over the Mediterranean and, and places like that. And here, you know, I understand right now the, the church is kind of, and I've been saying this, um, the virus is kind of like Rome. And because the virus is kind of like Rome, we're, we're hiding out from it, as it were, for the moment. Um, and, and the church has gone underground and we're communi communicating with each other the best way we know how, which right now is doing it online like we are with this video. But I, I kind of want you to know that what is going on right now is not a substitute for the gathering. It never has been and it never will be. Um, Lord bless you. I know some of you who, um, and, and, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm judging right now, I absolutely am. You cannot do church online. Um, it, it, it's inherently supplemental at best. Uh, you, can, you can listen to a Bible study, kind of like what we're doing here. Um, uh, you can even listen to worship music and praise and worship at home along with it. But it's not church. Church is inherently the gathering together of the body of Christ. Um, and, and when you say, you know, I can do church without church, you're making up your own form of worship. You're not being obedient to Christ. Christ said in John 15, 10 and 11, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Do you think Jesus would have just said, well, I know that's how God wants it done, but I'm going to do it this way instead. We have clear instruction in the Bible to, to have fellowship, to do these things. Verse 11 says, these things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Could it be? fellow Christian, that perhaps your life isn't as full or joyful because you're worshiping God in your own way instead of the way that he's given us in his word. And I know there's all kinds of excuses you can throw out. I can't find a good enough church. I can't find a this. I can't find a that. You know, I can remember when I got saved, we went to a full gospel church. We went to a Pentecostal church. We went to a Baptist church. And all of them had God there. Perhaps it's yourself that you need to examine. He said, if, if you love, you know, they will know you are mine by your love for one another. You know, and that's one of the things for us to come together as an assembly. It means putting our pride aside. It means putting what we think aside and, and you know, to not come, not come to judge people, but to come to love people. And if you don't love the body of Christ and desire and long to be around it, because most of you love your kids, you love your family. If you have Thanksgiving, you want your family around you. I heard one pastor say, if you have Thanksgiving, you want your family around you, not pictures of your family. So that's one of the things, man, to, to desire to be a part of the fellowship of the saints. I mean, it's the fellowship of the saints. How could you not want that? They're commanded by our Lord. He specifically says things that says we have to be together to do them. You know, and it's that partaking together over and over again. And it may seem repetitive to some of you, but the fact is, is he says every time you do certain things even, I mean, just for us to come together as a body of Christ and have communion declares, it says, to the world that Jesus Christ was crucified. Why? Because we're still here. Even in the midst of all this virus, even in the midst of everything that's going on, you're still here. And you can declare, even from where you're at, that Jesus Christ is crucified, risen from the dead. And if people would trust in him with their salvation, would repent of their sins, turn from this world and turn to him that could be saved. That's what you can do, um, you know, because it's like one of the things we do when we worship together as a body of Christ, because you can be at home, you know, and, and you can sing at home. Um, and some of you do and you think you're good at it, but you're not. <laughs> but the fact is, is you sing and you do that. And, and the cool thing is, is here together as a body of Christ, whether it's here, or whether it's at your own church or wherever it is. But even at home, in the midst of your family, if you guys come together and worship, it's an experience that's different than when we're just singing in the shower or in the car. 
It's we're coming together and being a part of that united body of Christ. I've got a friend and they're going to have a like drive-in church where they're going to um, put the church out over the radio. Everybody's going to drive to the same parking lot and, you know, and they're going to have church, you know, stick their hands out of the windows. The city just asked them to not get out of the cars. And that's cool. That's cool. They're still coming together in, to be a co as a cohesive a unit as they can. You know, so it's like, I just want to, I want you to get, as we're going through this time, I want you to be in that place um, where you understand that what's going on here, this is a, you know, the online stuff, it's all supplemental. It's all a supplement. It cannot replace being the body of Christ. If Jesus came to town, you wouldn't be happy with just seeing a picture your friend took on their iPhone of Jesus coming to town. If you're a believer in Christ, you'd want to be there, wouldn't you? And the fact is, is when the body comes together as a whole, like we are, or like we do, um, if he dwells in me and he dwells in you, for us to come together is to be in the presence, even greater, even stronger than, you know, it's like being that much more closer to heaven. And for some people, that's one of the reasons that they come to church, because it's as close to heaven as they're ever going to get. We can't operate as a church in the gifts to one another without being around one another. Uh, he says in Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8, For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt each one a measure of faith. So each of us has that measure of faith, but yet, you know, whether your faith is great or your faith is little, God has saved you to the uttermost. So there's not a single one of us that's more saved than anybody else. He goes on in verse 4, he says, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. If all members of the body don't have the same function, that means you by yourself are incomplete. You need to be a part of a fellowship. Whether it's ours or someone else's, you need to be a part of it. You need to be a part of a fellowship. Because individually, we, we are still separate and don't have the same function. Verse 5, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So he's like, just as, you know, because I, I always claim, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a I'm part of the body of Christ. But then I don't want to be around the body. And he's like, your natural desire should be to be around that body. If you don't want to be, then something's wrong and you need to correct it. Um, he says, <clears throat> having then, verse 6, gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophecy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And he's like, you know, you and these gifts are active in the body of Christ, and we do them towards one another and, and, and do that. And that's something you and I need to do with each other. This community that we have as a body of Christ. And I, and I understand because people say, well, I'm in a community online. But it doesn't become effectual as a community until it comes into the real world. You know, because I can get in fights. I can get in arguments. Uh, I can encourage people. I can do all those things via Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever it is, you know, whatever your poison is. But it doesn't have any real true effect until it impacts me in my life in reality um you know when, when we feed someone you know i can't send them digital food i can't you know i've got to give them food um because that, that's how we're designed we're designed to take part in reality not take part in only the metaphysical you know only in in, in esoteric things it's, you know, uh, it's kind of like when James said, if you just tell a brother, hey, I hope you get fed and don't give him food, you know, something's wrong with that. Um, I, I kind of look at it like this. Y our bodies are designed to get nutrients from food. When everything's working right, when everything's going good, if I exercise, treat my body well and eat the right things, then 
I do well. But when I eat what I call my Corona diet, which is Oreos, Fritos, um, you know, canned chili, uh, you know, uh, sandwiches with the worst bread I could find, um, you know, it's like, you know, it's like uh, carbs, carbs, and more carbs. And then uh, and I wonder, hey, I wonder why I'm starting to bloat. I have no idea. It's because I'm eating badly. And when we don't operate as the body of Christ, we're not getting that nutrients. We're not getting fed. We're not experiencing joy because we're not doing it the way God told us to do it. So for some of you, Honestly, for some of you, with this, you know, thing that's going on in the world around us, your lives really haven't changed that much. Because you never go out, you never go to church, you never do any of those things. It's all about you and just what's yours. And it needs to change. If you're a believer in the body of Christ, you've got to get plugged in. You have to. You absolutely have to. To be his hands and feet, not to be his keyboard and mouse. You need to get out there and do something. Not just touch a button, but go. Minister to someone. Even right now in our town, you know, um, Meals for the Elderly is looking for assistance. Um, uh, you know, if you need to contact us, we can get you in touch with people that need volunteers. Um, they need volunteers for some of the senior things, you know, because these seniors, a lot of them, uh, to get inexpensive meals, they would go different places in town and that's no longer available. So now they're doing drive through things and, you know, Meals for the Elderly is still delivering meals, um, still doing gift bags and everything for seniors. And, and there's a lot here in this town, but there's probably a lot where you are too. There's places that each and every one of us could go help at. Um, as people in the hospital get sick, and this is if you feel like, you know, the, I don't want to say if you feel like, if you are led to go to the hospital and volunteer, then go to the hospital and volunteer. They may not even put you in a place where there could be danger, but I mean, you just need to be aware and be safe. Um, there's all kinds of things you could do. There's probably neighbors you could go to and see if anybody needs help or needs anything. Um, there's things we can still do, even with this, you know, being trapped by this virus. Um, we just need to do them. Uh, you know, I, I, I hope you don't see this message, because some of you may feel like I'm attacking or something like that, and I'm trying not to. You know, I don't want to seem like I'm being, like, hypercritical or anything. I'm just, you know, I really wanted to examine, is this digital world that we have around us is it church and and i have to say it is not you know uh, and partly because i actually posted a meme that was like church online is not canceled you can't have church online you can have worship online you can have teaching online uh, you know we could even put pictures of people being healed online and all that good stuff but it we need to be among each other as much, as much as completely possible. So that's my two cents. That's the video I promised you. And if this one doesn't work, I'm not shooting another one. And I'm saying God told me not to do it. So.